Ha- uh, happy <laughs> birthday to Kanye West. Kanye West turns 45 years old today. Um, and so, you know, we've had a, a few different questions on our According to Hip Hop post on our social media. One being, what is Ka- what's your favorite Kanye West album? Another one being, what's your favorite Kanye West verse? Kanye West song? What's your favorite c- produced Kanye West track? That's the one I want to ask you off top. What's I your... was about to say the toughest one is going to be the produced track. It's okay, tough. so okay, so if the job of a producer, I look at a producer very much like a head coach. Your job is to bring the best out in the player slash the MC, right? Mm-hmm. What he did for Common on the corner, Mike. And so if, if, Under the job duress, the producer, if the job of the producer is to bring out the best in the MC, when is, hold on, not only when it was, I actually had to ask myself, it's like, because people were like, when was the last time Common rapped like that? And I was like, hold on, I'm not sure he Has rapped he? like that before. What right. are you talking about? When's the last time he rapped like that? I was like, I don't think he's rapped like that before. And so just off the top of my head, without thinking about it, I'm going with the corner because the job of the producer is to bring out the best in the MC. That's a and great he choice. Bought, and he bought out the best version of one of our all-time great MCs immediately. Black church services, murderers, Abraham serving burgesses, cats with gold permanence. You know... Move their bags as herbalists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, the other record that he went crazy on was The Sixth Sense. Now, when you say you didn't, you weren't sure if he rapped like that before that. The Sixth Sense was crazy. Mike performance. The Sixth Sense was crazy, but it didn't have the depth and the no. tone of this. It didn't. The Sixth Sense is crazy, and shout out the Prime. But but like, Ye still took him. Ye took him like just like, like about a half step further on the corner. He did. It's 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 like it's a half step better than than uh, the Sixth Sense beat wise. What he bought out in common wise, but I feel what you're saying because where you go to when you hear the corners is like, is he rhyme like this on like water for chocolate at all? And the sixth sentence or uh, Thelonious would probably be the closest to the that. closest. Yeah, uh, yeah, I agree. Mad Max with the super chat says, once I seen Cardi B on the list alone, but then ahead of who, uh, uh, we ahead of who? I guess who she is ahead of invasion of privacy over Illmatic. And, um, yeah, I mean, come on, man. All eyes on me. I almost went into cardiac arrest. I think every hip-hop head did. We were getting blown up on Twitter. Uh, Blue Collar Hustle says, What's ridiculous is that many of those albums on the list, they dissed when they first were released. Yeah. It was written, and Midnight Marauders got screwed on day one. They gave, uh, I don't know what they gave, uh, it was written, but they gave Midnight Marauders a 2 out of 5 rating. Right when I see Don Dada with the Midnight Marauder album cover is his profile pic. Um, Don Dada says, would you ever do a collab on with Dead End Hip Hop? Sure, we down. But uh, what was I going to say, man? Okay. I'm still with the whole notion and the idea of doing, if we're going to, if there is one versus matchup that could say versus, we need to have that Kanye versus Kanye versus the producer versus the artist. And like you said, when you got records like The Corner out there, because I was going to go, as far as like beats go and production goes. No, I get what you're saying. He's done better beats. Like Be All Right by Trina is a no, better no, beat no. than me. No, no, I agree with you. Uh, well, I don't know if it's a better beat than that. I think Dreams is one of those where that beat is just hypnotizing, but he didn't do a better production job on Dreams than he did on The Corners. I mean, I love your pick, to be honest. Oh, LP says a song that I love so much. He says, uh, Beats intro, Common killed it on Shy City, too. too. Shy City is my personal favorite song on Beats. What? Oh, I rap with the passion of Christ. Nigga, nigga crossed me, me, took it out of space, and niggas thought they lost me. I'm back like the Cairo Prack and D-Boy no, Survival D-Boy's Rap. rap. You know what? This line Joe almost got him in trouble, though. This ain't 94 Joey can't go back. My man need a, uh, made a... Game uh, need a makeover. My man retired. I'm a takeover. Over. Tell these Tell halftime, halftime niggas time breaks niggas over. Breaks over. <laughs> I'm raw hustlers. Get your baking soda. I mean, a lot... Of, I don't want to say a lot of people. 
some people I knew thought that he was going to Nas on that, and, and I'm glad that wasn't the case. That no, whole, I mean, my man see, retired, I'm going to take over. over. Tell these halftime niggas over. breaks over. Like, I, I mean, I get what he was trying to do, but it could have no. been taken another way. Great no, record, I don't though. think, see, I mean, see, he had enough of a reputation by then. It's like, no, 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 yeah. Calm ain't going to style on nobody like that, like on record for no reason. Like, nah, he ain't that dude. But that's when we got the line after that, like, you know, they called me Chi-Town's Nas. He came yeah. Yeah, on the next album. He's like, you know, yeah. I want to make it clear. Yeah. Um, Which Clayton is true, because Resurrection says, came out the same year as Illmatic, and a lot of people were like, dude, he's talking about Chicago in comparable ways that Nas is talking about Queensbridge, so. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Clayton is asleep. Says it was written. Got two out of five as well. Ridiculous. Damn, Rolling Stone. Damn. Okay. So the song that I was gonna pull out was going to be um, two words. I love that track. And I, no. I always swear by two words. I could say the two words is possibly his best produced track because of the drums and all of that. It's personally my favorite Kanye West song. And it could be my favorite Kanye West verse. But see, I'm, I'm going to spread the love around. I'm not going to do that. No, I mean, you know, he's got, he's he's one of the greatest producers of all time. So he's got Dr. Dre, DJ Premier, RZA, Pete Rock Problems. It's like, like, which beat are we picking? I mean, I guess with Pete, it's a little easier because of they reminisce over you. Mm -hmm. But it's like, no, he's got like RZA Primo Problems where it's like, well, which one of these epic beats do you like? You know what a personal favorite of mine is? Like, maybe it's because I was living in Cali when I came out. But it's like, I love crack music. Great record. I love the um, beat. I'm talking about like when crack music comes on, boom, 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 boom. Like, like yeah, you got stuff for days, like everywhere. Right? Yeah. I think yeah. that my favorite Kanye West verse might be his uh, second verse on Chain Heavy. Okay. Yeah. I, I think I, I like might dig and do that. Um, yeah. The Chain Heavy verse is crazy. And no, if you guys you, haven't heard that, go to YouTube and look that up. No, that's a dig, Mike. That's a hell of a dig. That is some of his best stuff. You're right. Yeah. Um, He's I'm rapping actually, at a high level. I'm actually uh, going to say that, you know, <clears throat> I think he touches people, and I've seen it live, the way that I thought that he did, mm -hmm. more than any other artist in the modern era. And I'm not just talking hip-hop. I think people are touched by him, for better or for worse. Yeah. And... Triggered think, and touched. Yes. But to hear him rap, Mike, on Roses off late registration, that second verse is always going to stay with me. Mm. That the way he ends it. For my family, we know where home is. So instead of sending flowers, we the roses. And that's still my favorite verse. It's still the verse that stayed with me the most that he ever did. Because it felt like the most personal verse that he did while still being the person that he was like the whole song where he was like, um, ask the nurse, did she do the research? She asked me, can you sign some t-shirts? <laughs> is you smoking reefer? <laughs> Didn't you see that we hurt? Right. You know what I mean? That's that. That's yay in a nutshell. That's Kanye everything. is the realest man. The yeah, realest. Yeah. So, so when he does that is when I love him most. And so those verses on roses, like you can pick one. Uh, Vincent Hughes with the Super Chat says, Kanye's verse on uh, They Say is definitely one of my favorites of his. Yes. Dope verse. And I was going to go to uh, What Will Meek Do, too, because, you know, again, when you think about B, I think about Daytona, and I think of how he showed up on both of those. Uh, Blue Collar Hustle says, Common clarified that line and said he never did snides. I figured that he wasn't. I, but oh, again. The what, would, you know. the what Will Meek Do? The What Would Meek Do verse is better than the They Say verse. Like, that's one. I, I remember when it came out, I said it's one of his 10 best verses. It might be one of his five best verses. It might be. I won't feel right till I feel verses. like Phil Knight. Going for six springs like Phil told Mike. Huh. Seven feels nice. You know what that feels like? No more hiding my scars. I show them like seal, right? Like he said, man, everything they say cause a new debate. <laughs> it's, it's real, oh, man. I love it when he say... It's hallway too long, bitch too bad. Mm. Got a surrogate as kids get two dads. I be thinking, what would, what would Tupac, Tupac do? <laughs> you be thinking what new kids on the block do. Bag of Jones oh, no. says, Rolling Stone just uh, giving Nas more KD3 material. This is true. Uh, LP says, not a fan of Ye as a person, but he's top five producer. Um, yes. 
you know, again, I don't know the person personally, but what I will say is what we do ask of artists is for artists to give us themselves. And I don't think there's anybody who does that better than him. And I no, think, I mean, again, you know, that's Tupac, where the connection is, you know. And Tupac died when he was 25. So, like, he's the, he's the um, as far as, like, watching somebody progress into manhood and still, like, maintain, like, the connection and the passion and the emotion of it. Like, like I said, for better or for worse, you know, like, I don't feel like he's made great material on a solo level in a while, but <clears throat> it doesn't change, like, the depth of when he speaks and when he comes through. Harry H says, uh, any updates on the Patreon? This episode would have been perfect for playing music live. Also, that late registration, yay, uh, is A1. Much respect, y'all. I guess we should have an update on that one. Next week, you want to, um, I mean, we'll, we'll talk over the weekend and try to yeah, yeah. get those Let's things put it together. out. Hold on, you want to know what? We should have took a picture. Me and Mike actually sat down at a table together <laughs> right. in front of each other on Monday for like two hours. We were meeting, we you know. Took, we should have took a picture of us in the boardroom before. Yeah, we, we got like, some oh, big no, plans. We actually, we actually see each other. We're actually in the same city. <laughs> right. It happens. Uh, LP says, in my opinion, to be a top five producer, you have to have a classic single, uh, your own classics, and at least two classics for other artists. Ye has those. This is my thing with Ye when it comes to him and comparing him to other hip-hop producers. I don't think there's anybody who has proven that they could take on established acts and basically get the best out of them for a whole effort the way well, that he has. Here's the feather in his cap that he has that none of the all-time great producers have. He hasn't given... No other producer has given a classic Production-wise, to artists as succinctly different as Common and Pusha T are. Yeah. No and other Jay-Z. all-time great producer would say that. You can't say that you produced an all-time great album over here for that kind of guy and that guy. Now, he is the only guy walking around like that, Mike, because of Daytona. He's the and because guy of like Banana Republic and Old Navy. Mm-hmm. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, somebody said we got to do a Nas versus Jay-Z versus first. Listen, man. I mean, we could do that on our um, on our Patreon or our, our uh, I guess our exclusive show. It might not actually be on Patreon. It might be through the t- site. But I'm gonna say this right here, man. <sighs> Y'all gonna think that I'm I'm, I'm trolling? And I'm not. I promised you. But I think that Kanye's material, in my opinion, collectively. His age better than Jay Z's. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm listening to College Dropout. I listen to Late Register. I listen to like these timeless themes, and I think it's more of a content thing. Now, obviously, Jay Z's the more skilled MC, right? Mm-hmm. But I think the fact that Jay Z latched on to different styles, different sounds, it kind of put dates on mm-hmm. his material in ways that Kanye's hasn't. And it also helps that Kanye is an excellent producer, one of the all-time great producers, and he knows how to make music that is just going to be around. Like, I listen to All Falls Down, and we don't care what people say. Like, it sounds like that could have, you know, I, I listen to that with the same ears today that I did in 2004. You know what I mean? No, so... <clears throat> you know... I think part of the reason why Ye's music is holding up better, and it's not like it's a wide gap, but I think it is holding up better. I would have to agree with you on that because I think his themes are more timeless too. Yeah. It's like some of the themes and the ideas and the motifs that he have, he's created have been more timeless, like Jesus Walks, All Falls Down, you know? Like, no, 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 these are timeless themes. And he's created some timeless themes, like two words, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like. You know, so so he, he works maybe more in the sphere of a Tupac and a Nas in terms of like a creating a theme of a song or a moment where it stays with you. Like Roses. I'm one like he, he's, who... He's more apt to do that than Jay, to give you something that, right. that stays over the course of time because it touches an emotion and a place in you. You know what I mean? I'm of the belief that the college dropout is just instinctively a better album than the Blueprint. and And again... The missteps that the college dropout has aren't like the missteps that the Blueprint has. And I also feel like a lot of the stuff with the Blueprint, and again, I think the Blueprint's an excellent album, incredible album. 
course it is. It doesn't have the hits that College Dropout has. And on top of that, it doesn't have the depth that College Dropout has. Even when we go like, because I remember we did like a poll, um, like just with the intros of the album, right? I don't care what anybody says. And I think the poll went more towards um, um, uh, The Ruler's Back. But if I listen to The Ruler's Back as a song, and I listen to We Don't Care What People Say as a song, We Don't Care What People Say is a better song than The Ruler's Back. It just is. But I think the fact that it's Jay and it's yay, like people are kind of, you know what I I mean? I agree with you, but here's what I'm going to tell you about and I have, and I, and I pulled up my list because I'm like, hold on, Mike. And I was like, I know I have the blueprint higher than the college dropout. Um, and I do. I don't have it higher than my beautiful dark twisted fantasy. I'm going to tell you something. When we get even to my list, in the process of doing my list, I even learned some things about myself as a listener. And some things have changed even on my personal list, even at the top. Yeah. Based on me just having to be honest with myself because I said to myself, like, you know, and you, and, and you probably do this when you make lists too. It's like, am I... I can't make this list for me. Right. And if I and if I'm and, and if and, and in the fairness of not making this list for me is why you have something like I'll just say Illadelph Half Life is at fifty seven. Yeah. And I love that album way more than it being at fifty seven. You feel me? Which Rolling Stone left off their list as well. Antonio says uh, I've been talking about these publications for years, but they seem to become more disrespectful over time. Thank you, too, now for me, calling attention to it. Go ahead. Now, let me tell you something about the whole blueprint and um, college dropout thing. I feel like there might be slight... I think the classic song level is about the same. But here's what I'm going to tell you. I don't think that's prime. Ye has not producer or MC yet. That I is prime. That's Jay. the Hold scary on. That is part. Prime Jay. Hold on, that is Prime J mm-hmm. with Prime Ye on the beats. Exactly. No, that's and the so, scary part. And so for me, even though I think, like, how about this? I'm going to listen to Spaceship, All Falls Down, Jesus Walks, We Don't Care What People Say, Two Words, uh, The Talib and, and Get Em High. I'm probably going to listen to them six joints more than anything on the blueprint outside of You Don't Know and All I Need and Lyrical Exercise. But I still think the Blueprint is probably a better album. Ye has a lot to do with the Blueprint being a better album, in my opinion. Listen, Ye is the Blueprint. It is what it is, man. Like we heard what Just Blaze tracks sound like before, um, you know, as as Ye alleges stole Kanye's style. We heard what his shit sound like, and Bink. I think Bink and Kanye kind of brought that whole vibe to the Blueprint. But even with Bink's tracks. They don't sound like the sped up, you know, I guess it's called Chickmunk Soul or whatever they call it. He wasn't taking on that, but he was taking on a soulful sound. But yeah, Kanye's records on there stand out. And you could tell yeah. the songs like Heart of the City, those were songs that you build a whole album around. Well, well, here's, well here's what I'll tell you about Ye. Like, even on this, I think he's probably... <clears throat> one of the main contributors on my list of 100 albums, like between the material he put out and mm. or produced or has a track on, on some of like, like some of these albums that I have on here. He, well, he has a beat on there too. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so that you know, says a lot. He, LP does, with like, the super chat does. says, uh, that's why Nas is the goat coop. We've seen him grow with his music, never compromised, went through the ups and downs and kept his integrity. No, I, I'm not only a client. I'm the player president of that. I, I've been saying that from the jump. You want to know what? Can, just real quick, I want to go something that um, I wasn't sure if it was Uncle Frame or Leroy. I think it was Unc. Unc was like, um, Nas fans need to stop attaching his greatness, per se, to things that Jay-Z has done and accomplished. And he referenced me and referenced how I keep on bringing up how Jay doesn't have a death row East. He's like, well, Nas is great enough that you can just say like death row East. You know what I'm saying? And so, so no. And I told him that that was fair. And so I'm going to challenge some of our um, audience to do the same the way uncle did. Cause he, uh, he made a very valid point when he said that, cause I'm going to tell you where it comes from for me. Like I'll never forget where I was when the takeover came out and how everybody railroaded around me. 
And if you're a Nas fan, that probably happened to you too. So there is probably something to that. Mm -hmm. But Unk was right when he's like, no, no, no. Like this man has done enough that it's like, you can just let it stand how it stands. Like when we're talking about 444, we don't have to say like. Life is good. Yeah, we don't have to. I mean, unless you want to say, well, it's not as good as life is good in my opinion. Let's line the songs up. You feel me? LP with we, the super need start, we need to stop getting personal and be like, oh, well, hmm. well, Jay just took Nas' whole shit and made 444. Now y'all think it's great because it's Jay. Nas did that shit 10 years ago. Your guy sucks. Fuck him. Da, da, da. You know what <laughs> I mean? That's what Unk's talking about. LP with the super chat says, uh, in my opinion, the themes on CDs, I'm sorry, not CD. The themes on college dropout age better than the beats. That's the thing, though. It's like yes, there's the a problem, there's bro. a magic in the fact that he's so raw. We saw where this guy took no. it, and to see him in this rare form, it literally is rare form because you're never gonna see that Kanye West again. And, and that's a, and that's a great flashpoint, but it, that still brings the quality of it into question because it's like, and I I've always said this, and I even though I have late re, I have late registration ranked lower than the college dropout. But I love late registration more because he's a better producer and a better rapper, and the things are almost on par and almost as timeless. Yeah, and the no, no. are actually bigger. I mean, I say and this he, on the show all the time. When he came out with diamonds, and I heard right. him out he, the gate like, "Close your eyes I mean, and imagine, feel the acid, Vegas, feel the magic, Vegas on acid, seen through East Saint Laurent glasses." I'm like, he's a whole nother MC now. I think. I mean, I think the yay that like. The guy, Kanye West, yay, Yeezy, Yeezus, the, like the legend that he is, the guy that we're talking about isn't the guy on the college dropout. It's the guy on late registration, and that's why I love late registration so much. Like the legend that he is, that's the guy. Like, I not think the Gold Digger is a perfect single, too. Like yes, if, and Gold if Digger somebody is the guy, asked, That's what I'm talking about. That's yeah. the legend. If somebody right dropped there. in from out of space and asked me to describe who Kanye West is as an MC... I'm playing gold yeah. digger. It, it but does that's what everything. I mean. You can play late registration though, Mike, because yeah. he's got moments like that. Hold on, what's he's the shit witty. with Nas? Feel, feeling better than some head on a Sunday afternoon. Better than a chick to say yes too soon. Until you have a daughter, that's what I call karma, and you pray to God she don't grow breast too soon. He's got shit like that that's all over yeah. late registration. That's the legend. That's yeah. the guy. Jordan he's House with the super chat says, Bink did one nine hundred hustler and said just uh, oh, I guess he said, "Who?" oh, he said, just bit his style and ran with it. I can see He's that. right about that. Bink did do 1900 Hustler. 1900 Hustler 1900 was 1900 a standout on the Dynasty, too. That's the best record on there to me. And honestly, I'm going to keep it real. That shit does sound like a just, or what we know of is a Just Blaze beat now. Burn it. Yeah. Burn it. Yeah. And even the, the screams like that. Ah. Yep. The drums. Actually, that shit sounds like you don't know, or you don't know sounds it like it. Here's a couple of suggestions on how you can finesse it. You find a yeah. dude in town, you send him a short message, say, hey, I'm new in town, I don't know my way around, but I got some pure white to show to come back brown. I get that butter all night, because most niggas don't know a brick from a bike. They keep buying hard white, and if you're free tomorrow night, we can meet and discuss <laughs> price. FYI, I've never, never been, been robbed, robbed in my, in my life. life. <laughs> You know, the Dynasty has some great moments, but overall, that's not a four and a half mic album like the Source it's not. gave it. It's barely and, you a know, four, but one nine hundred Hustle is one of the best rap songs uh, I've ever heard. They blacked out. <laughs> yeah, that's just great. Uh, Mr. Crazy. Pragmatic with the Super Chat says the Blueprint is a classic album that aged like milk due to the radio friendly sound. American Gangsta has more replay value. Wow, shout out to Mr. Pragmatic with the $20 Super Chat. That is... Interesting you said that because I was talking to somebody and we were talking about the fact that Rolling Stone has the blueprint for the people who don't know. We're going to go over this list. They got the blueprint at number three all time uh, in the top 200. And I well, said for ridiculous. some people, the blueprint's not even number three in his catalog. Now, I disagree with that. But based on what Mr. I Pragmatic do. says... I could see him possibly having reasonable doubt black album American Gangster and then the blueprint. No, I th how about this? If you were to just pop into hip hop today and just listen to the albums, I think maybe you could see some I can see some of that with the black album. I can't see it with American Gangster if you're just like isolating it and you weren't there. Yeah. I'm saying this and I just got done referencing, I still remember where I was and how I got railroaded when the takeover came out. 
No, Mike, if you was outside when the blueprint was coming up or coming up or coming around, like I'm I'm not about to sit up here and do that and be disrespectful like that. No, no, no. <laughs> I, no, listen, American Gangster is not better than the blueprint to me. Oh, hold on, no, no, no. I'm, I, I want to no, know when I talk about, well, his reign being the most dominant reign in terms of how the per public perceived it since Rakim, this moment right here is the time that I'm talking about. Oh, what it was Jay Z's year? And he made the yeah. music to back it up. Like when he, the, the rulers back, the takeover. I like girls. You don't know. Heart of the city never change. Lyrical exercise. No, you tripping. And the I'm whole like, legend I, that like, he recorded it in a week. Exercise still gets me amped to this day. That's one of my favorite, favorite J records. Yeah. No. You no, know, I heard me to find out that he stole it. He still spazzed on it. <laughs> Listen, this is how I order it. I got Reasonable Doubt, The Blueprint, uh, The Black Album. Then I'm going. I'm gonna be fair. I'm going man. American Gangster. I I like American Gangster more, but it's hard to put that over Volume Two. It's so much stuff that Volume actually, Two has. Actually, I would actually say Volume One. Actually, I was thinking about that. I would go. I would I actually. You know how I feel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Ninety-seven. Ho, give me Volume One. Actually, I don't care what anybody says. Volume the only One thing has wrong, the most missteps. The only thing wrong with Volume One is the singles. Do you understand? And those He's singles like, are very wrong, though. The mo the no, thing that I, I the thing that I nitpick. And I don't even think it's nitpicking. On the Blueprint 4, Volume 1 does that times 3. You know what I'm so, saying? So, no, here's what I'll tell you. Those singles kept Volume 1 from making this top 100 because I swear, like, half the albums on here don't have the nine songs that he has on Volume 1, including a couple of his albums that made made this list. Like the I want to get to this The list. Black Album. They're just better overall albums. Those sing those singles ruined like those singles ruined what was about to be an epic moment from him. Like he was about to make reasonable. He was about to make like like two like like bona fide classic classics, and those singles messed it up. Like imaginary players is on there. Million and one questions is on there. Mm -hmm. Streets is watching is on there. Friend or foe ninety eight is on there. Where I'm from is on there. You must love me is on there. LP with the super chat says uh, the blueprint it's ain't even number one on Jay's list. Reasonable. Uh, R.R. Oh, likes experimenting beats. Uh, how Timbaland got more credit in the top 10 albums list than Dre, Premier, Pete Rock, Havoc. Yeah. Very problematic. I think he said, yeah, he's saying that, um, I guess, Rolling Stone likes experimental beats. Listen, man, I love Missy Ellie, and we're going to get to this list in one second. But, you know, her album being, what was it, number six, number seven? Miss E so addictive being number seven on an all time greatest hip hop list. Like, come on. Pick the wrong album. Come they on. picked the wrong album if they were picking a Missy album. There's and a, I've la, said la, this la, before. La, la. I love Missy, man. I love Missy. There's not a Missy album that is number seven on an all time hip hop list. It's just not. Well, and, I, and I'm pretty sure Missy would say that too. And, and I've said this too. I said, there's hip hop, there's RB, and then there's what Missy and Timberland gave us. You're not going to even listen to Miss E So Addictive next to Doggy Style and say that it's a better album. You're not going to listen to it next to 2001. You're not going to listen to it next to... Uh, come on, man. I mean, I don't even have to go there. We're, we're going to get to this list because I really want to get to this list at this point.